Good afternoon, I'm Billy Lopez alongside Nicolette Rojo and welcome to Campus West here in Laverne, California for today's Skyax softball matchup between the visiting Chapman Panthers and the home Laverne Leopards. Chapman is under the tutelage of head coach Janet Lloyd, who is in her 24th season as head coach at Chapman. Chapman comes in with a 6-6 six six record in conference and a 13-11 and record overall. We step aside for our national anthem. So Chapman sits fifth in Skyac standings. For Laverne, they are coached by Julie Smith, who is in her 10th season at Laverne. And they come in with a 10-4 and record in conference and a 15-11 and record overall. Both teams are looking to start ramping up the season on the right foot. Uh, Nicolette, what are the keys to the game? Well, the keys to the game, we'll start with Chapman, is to get on base, as they are fourth in stolen bases in Skyac, particularly with Mikaela Foise, who is first in Skyak with 18 stolen bases. Also, contain Laverne's power hitters, especially when you're going up against a big power hitting team like Laverne. It's, the key, it's key for pitcher Sarah Takita to limit them. But Chapman has only given up three home runs all season, so they look to limit them today, this afternoon. Also, be aggressive on base, as they are fourth in stolen bases, so it's key to get on board, especially for Foise. Now, as for Laverne, it's important to get a hot start on offense as they are first in Skyac for home runs at 21 and sixth in runs batted in. They don't steal often, but they've shown they can get the job done as they are third in Skyac play with 15 on the year and have yet to be caught all season. Pitching does win games with Rojo on the mound today. It's keeper to get a hot start from the get-go, especially when you go up, going up against a lineup who's fourth in batting average walks and stolen bases. She's looking to bounce back from last week's loss. And the defense must remain consistent all day as they've committed 20 errors this season. And keep Foise off base. And the leadoff hitter, Michaela Fo Foise, will step in, batting from the left side as we take a look at the Panthers lineup. Foise followed by Samita Weiser. Wong in the cleanup spot. Runji batting fifth. Ballard sixth. Tong at short batting seventh. Gallego at catcher. And... Rounding up the lineup for the Panthers is Christine Laverde. Both teams wearing pink today. Uh, the University of Laverne softball team is in partnership with Skyac and NFCA. They are going to be ho hosting a strikeout cancer event during Saturday's doubleheader today. Second one from Rojo. And Foise does an offer at it. One and one the count. Rojo on the season is 4-5 and five with a win-loss record. Pretty good ERA at 3.28 in 53 and a third innings pitch has allowed 32 runs, only 25 of them earned. As the count moves to 1-2. and two. You mentioned Nicolette Foise, one of the top stolen fast players on the Panthers team has 18 stolen bases, but she also knows how to get it done with the bat, leading Skyac with a 468 average. So it's very important if you're Rojo to be, to be careful with those pitches that she is a great contact hitter. The 2-2 two is put in play over to second base. De Guzman scoops it up, throws over to first in time to retire Foise for out number one. Nice little quick out right there to get the job done for one out. 
So we take a look at Laverne defensively from left to right in the outfield, Ogata, Condon, and Kendricks. From left to right in the infield, Borden, Tevis, De Guzman, and Navarro at first. Behind the plate is De Angelica D'Angelo, and on the mound is Gianna Rojo as Sumida takes a strike 0-1. The 0 1. Good pitch on the outside corner, finds the corner. 0 and 2 the count. For Samita, she comes in batting 247, does have 12 runs batted in, as well as four stolen bases. The 0 2 to Samita is way outside, 1 and 2. Rojo has struggled with command this season. On the season, 22 walks to 21 strikeouts. Looks to improve on that today. She sets and delivers the 1-2 is high, 2-2. Two and two. On deck is the first baseman, Kristen Weiser. Third baseman, Borden in on the speedy Samita as the 2-2 is called strike three. Samita window shops for out number two. That's a great pitch by Rojo, getting that corner, the left part of the plate to catch him looking. Now batting first baseman number 30, Kristen Weiser. That'll bring in the first baseman, Weiser, batting 328 on the season with 14 runs batted in. Rojo works quickly. The first one to Weiser, slap to the right side. De Guzman at second, over to first in time. A quick one, two, three, top of the first for Rojo and Laverne. We go bottom one, no score. You're watching LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. If you're playing with us, that you should have the first pitch, ball, strikeout, strike. So Rojo gets the job done. Now moving forward, it's going to be the Laverne lineup to get things done on the other side. This is a great start for Laverne right here, getting that quick one, two, three out, especially for Rojo, who, as you mentioned before, Billy has had command issues in the past. This is a good start so far to get Laverne in that momentum as they are up to bat in this bottom half of the inning. And a little bit more on the strikeout cancer day today. Fans will be invited to play softball bingo during the game in order to help raise money for the cancer research. And all the proceeds from the snack bar will also be donated towards cancer research. As we take a look at the Leopards lineup, Condon batting first, followed by Tevis and Borden in the cleanup spot. Nine homers with Navarro batting fifth, D'Angelo, sixth, Garcia, seventh, Kendricks, eighth, De Guzman, and rounding up the lineup is Rachel Ogata playing left field. On the mound for Chapman will be Sarah Takeda, four and two record on the season with a 3.58 ERA. She is the ace of this Panthers team. In 43 innings, she's only allowed 38 runs, 22 of which were earned. 14 walks to 17 strikeouts on the season. Carly Condon, the center fielder for Laverne, will step in. Batting 250 on the season with a home run and nine RBIs and five stolen bases. Average has been dipping in the past few games, looking to creep back up and get back on base and scoring runs, something that she's been able to do early on in this season. For Condon, she loves playing here at Campus West, batting 333 on the season here compared to 257 on the road. The corners pinch in on the infield with the speedy Condon as the first one from Takeda finds the strike zone 0 and 1. Outfield plays Condon straight up. The 0 1 from Takeda to Condon. Off speed, just misses, one and one the count. I feel a run right here. You definitely want to be patient going forward, not just for Condon, but as for the entire lineup. No, with this petrol, petrol like Takeda, it's very, very important. The one-one. 
just misses outside, two and one. And for Condon, that's been something she's been able to do all season, has 12 walks to only three strikeouts, a very patient hitter, and that's why head coach Julie Smith loves to have her in the leadoff spot. The one-two is going to be waved at, popped up left side of the infield. It'll be the third baseman who was unable to grab it. It was Heaven Wong at third, popped out of her glove, and Condon's aboard with the early error. So if you're scoring at home, it'll be an E5, and that'll bring up Shelby Tevis, the shortstop. That's the 37th error for Chapman as they are six and errors for Sky at play. And if you're Laverne, it's a, even though it's an error, it's good to have the speedy Condon on first and with a good contact hitter like Tevis. Tevis, Tevis takes one inside and is ahead of the count 1-0. and oh. As you mentioned, they've committed the third most errors in Skyak. If you look at Takeda's record, 4-2, and two, says she's allowed 38 runs, but only 22 of them earned. The 1 0, Tevis squares to bunt, and it'll be foul. 1 and 1 the count. Tevis on the year, batting 288 with two homers and 13 runs batted in. Panthers defense need to be aware with Condon at first as she is tied for team lead with five stolen bases on the season. Takeda into the wind. The 1 1 to Tevis is ripped down to short. The flip to second for one. The throw back to first is not in time. So Tevis will reach first on the fielder's choice. Even though Chapman didn't get the double play, getting Condon out the lead runner was a good start. So we take a look at the defensive alignment for Chapman. From left to right in the outfield, it'll be Ballard, Lovard, and Runji. From left to right in the infield, Wong, Tong, Samita, Weiser. Behind the plate catching is Kyra Gallego, and on the mound is Sarah Takeda. As the first pitch to Borden is filed in there for a strike 0 and 1. Borden batting 273 on the season with seven runs batted in. Even though they got the lead runner Condon out, Tevis does have four stolen bases as well. And there she goes off with the pitch, a little hit and run. This one's not going to be going to second as Tevis was off with the pitch. So Borden, in a sense, gets the job done, moves Tevis in scoring position, sacrifices herself. Catherine Navarro will come up now. The speedsters of Laverne, that's one reason why I've noticed Ms. Weiser is actually in towards the base compared to right off the base because to try to get that double play, well, it hasn't worked. This this play, that's that's what they're trying to do just to look for the speedy. First pitch to Navarro. Outside corner, good for a strike, 0-1. Navarro leading Skyak with nine homers on the season. 17 runs batted in. Has a 368 batting average. Tevis at second in scoring position as this one's rifled to the third baseman, Wong. She'll throw over to first in time. So the leadoff error doesn't harm Chapman here in the bottom half of the first. No runs, no hits. One left on base. We go to the top of the second. No score here at Campus West between Laverne and Chapman. You're watching LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. diabetes but with more exercise and a change in diet it can be reversed i've tried exercising it it just makes me hungry for bacon i love bacon too and who really likes to exercise not me <laughs> me neither nobody <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so we're good what oh you still have pre-diabetes big time Top of the second here at Campus West. Billy Lopez alongside Nicolette Rojo. Gianna Rojo had a pretty good top of the first. Worked one, two, three. She'll face the heart of the lineup, four, five, and six here in the top of the second. What does Rojo need to do to continue that hot start? What Rojo needs to do is basically keep, keep her command down, down and remain consistently calm throughout 
throughout the game and especially including this e inning. So it'll be the four, five, and six hitters for Chapman, Heaven Wong, followed by Liz Runji and Hope Ballard. Wong batting 290 on the season, has two homers on the season, six RBIs. Those two homers is good enough to lead her team. The number Chapman. Number Interesting split Wong. stats for Heaven Wong. Batting 091 at home, but away she's batting 429, so Rojo definitely needs to be aware of that bat. Infield and outfield play. Wong straight up as the first one is inside. 1-0 the count. For the first time in the game, Rojo has missed on the first pitch. The 1-0 misses as well. 2-0. Six walks on the season for Wong compared to nine strikeouts. The 2-0, a little half-hearted swing. Home plate umpire said she went around two and one. The 2-1, waved and missed, two and two. So just like that, Rojo able to even up the count. And is a strike away from retiring the first four Chapman hitters. 2-2, two -two swung and missed. Off-speed pitch, fools Wong for out number one here in the top of the second. Perfect location by D'Angelo and the great execution by Rojo to get the first out. That'll bring in the right fielder, Liz Rungi. 375 hitter on the season. Comes up empty, swinging 0 and 1. The 0 1 inside, foul to the left, 0 and 2. Rojo wanting to work quickly. As soon as she gets that ball back, she's ready, steps on the pitcher's circle and is ready to work for Rungi. She's trying to take some time to get Rojo out of her comfortability as the 0-2 misses outside one and two. Now when a pitcher rush, I would not necessarily rushes to the circle, but speeds up the tempo, it's to not throw off the hitter, which hence why Rungi is trying to slow th the temple down. One, two, foul to the right side. It'll land on top of the visiting team dugout right in front of the first base line. Rungi, the junior, five foot two, out of Poway, California. The one, two, swung on and missed, held on by D'Angelo at Behind the plate, back-to-back -back strikeouts to begin the top of the second for Rojo. It's a nice pitch by Rojo, the top right above the chest area, and a good job by D'Angelo for seal sealing that ball and holding in the tip, the foul tip. It brings in the junior left fielder, Hope Ballard. Two out, nobody on base. No score here in the top of the second as Rojo misses with the first one, 1-0. One and oh. Ballard batting 343 on the season, three RBIs and a couple of stolen bases. Rojo's 1-0 is outside, corner 1-1. One one. Ballard, another one of Chapman hitters who has a higher batting average on the road. That one handcuffed her on the inside part of the plate, fouls it 1-2. Infield and outfield play Ballard straight up. Gianna Rojo, strike away from setting down the first six Chapman hitters. The one, two, swung on, put in play to the left side. Great play by Borden at third, throws the first in time. Another one, two, three inning for Rojo and Laverne. We go bottom two, still no score here at Campus West. You're watching LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. 
So quickly, six up, six down. Nicolette, what are you seeing from Rojo that's working early on? Rojo's command is working is working a lot more. It has been increasingly improving since the past few games. And the locations of the pitches are spot on. She's getting them at the right. She's going back and forth between speeds of her pitches and the velocity of them as well, throwing off the hitters or getting them to ground out as well. So if you're Rojo, two back to back, one, two, three innings is a great start for her so far. The key is to keep up that momentum. And for Laverne to also to also get back in this game, to continue that streak on the offensive side and that low momentum. And for Rojo, that's been the key. You mentioned changing speeds early on. In her past few games when she has gotten in trouble and struggled with command, it's been relying on her other pitches rather than changing speeds. When she's able to do that, she's more effective and is able to get quick outs, as you can see here early on. Already a couple of, couple of strikeouts in that second inning. So bottom half of the second, no score between Chapman and Laverne. Angelica D'Angelo will lead the bottom of the second. She's batting 292 on the season, has four home runs and has 22 runs batted in. Those RBIs lead Laverne. First run from Takeda in there, strike one. D'Angelo, the senior catcher for Laverne, looks to get things started here in the bottom half of the second. Takeda wind, 0-1 is low, 1-1. Field and outfield play, D'Angelo straight up. The one run from Takeda is going to be popped up. Shallow left center field. It's going to drop in between a trio of Chapman players. And D'Angelo with a bloop single here in the bottom half of the second to get things started. Great job by D'Angelo, keeping her body straight and getting, getting that ball to hit just the barrel off the bat to bloop in left, left center now field the for the hit. Designated player number 18. Garcia. So the first hit of the ball game from either side comes from Angelica D'Angelo here in the bottom half of the second. Melissa Garcia squares the bunt on the first one, fouls it, 0-1. Garcia, the junior out of Norwalk, batting 286, three homers and eight runs batted in on the season. He's looking to get D'Angelo in scoring position here with nobody out in the bottom of the second and no score. Corners are in for Chapman. The 0-1 is taken high. One and one. One one cuts a little bit too much inside. Two and one. Good action count here, two and one. We'll see if they have anything on. Corners for Chapman remain in. A two one from Takeda to Garcia. Swung on, fouled back two and two. Even though D'Angelo doesn't steal a lot compared to few other part, few other parts of Laverne's lineup, they do like to run a small ball type of type of style. So look for them to be more aggressive as each runner is on base, gets on base. A 2-2, two -two. fooled Garcia, and she looks at strike three for out number one. Kind of buckled here, knees on the off-speed pitch from Takeda. It was a beauty of a pitch, and a big out number one right there, keeping the leadoff runner at bay at first. In steps the right fielder, Sienna Kendricks. 219 on the season with a home run and seven runs batted in. Takeda in the wind. First one to Kendricks. In there, strike one, 0 and 1. Takeda having pretty good velocity early on in this game. 
And a solid command. The 0-1 hits her spot just a bit outside, 1-1. One one. Um, now Takeda's approach is a little more patient when it comes to winding up her pitches and being and getting prepared. prepared. That, that way to try to fool the offense a little bit. The 1-1 one one is rifled down the left field line, foul. And the count moves to 1-2. and two. Kendrick's just a little out in front on that off-speed pitch. Looking to straighten one out here. D'Angelo's at first. She led off the bottom of the second with a bloop single in the left center field. Garcia would go down on strikes, and Kendrick's is looking to move the line forward. The one-two off-speed misses high, two and two. Kendrick's one home run on the season came here at Campus West. Takeda into her wind, the 2-2, swung on, fouled at the plate. Fooled Kendricks a little bit, but nonetheless she was able to get a piece of it. Kendricks here is doing a great job fighting off the count, battling those off-speed pitches by Takeda, especially with that, com that really solid velocity of, and command of, off those pitches. The 2-2 with one away is swung on, drilled in the left side of the infield, in the left field for a base hit. And Laverne will have first and second, one out. And Michelle de Guzman coming up. That's good patience by Kendricks. Looking for the right pitch, a little just, just an inch or two off the clip, off the in the middle of the play on the left side to get the hit. Yeah, the shortstop Samantha Tong did everything she could, dove to her, to her right side trying to get the ball but to no avail. So two singles here in the bottom half of the second have netted runners at first and second. As de Guzman comes in, batting 242 on the season, takes a ball outside, 1-0. and D'Angelo at second, Kendricks at first, de Guzman at the dish. No score, bottom two. The 1-0 is swung on, popped into right field for out number two. Kind of a weak line drive to the opposite side. Rungi was there for out number two. Now batting the fielder, number seven. Rungi was, was fairly shallow right field, field, hence why runners did not advance. So for Laverne to score now in the bottom half of the second, it's going to have to be Rachel Ogata to clutch up here. Two on, two out. In the bottom half of the second, no score. First one to Ogata as she runs up. Does an offer at it. 1-0. Ogata batting 263 on the season. Two runs batted in. Looking to add to that total here with D'Angelo in scoring position at second. The 1-0. Outside 2-0. Takeda has been a little bit more careful as far as location goes now with runners on base. Trying to get Laverne hitters to get in bad counts themselves, but Ogata doesn't offer. She squares the bunt. It's a good one. It's going to be, have to be Takeda, and there's going to be no play. It's an infield bunt single. It'll load the bases for the leadoff hitter, Carly Condon. Great timing by Ogata to, to lay down the bunt right in the and move up a few now, inches, and over. with that speed of hers and Center being on the left side of the plate, it makes it a lot easier for her to reach it quicker and load up the bases for Condon. And it's a smart play. If Ogata does get a single into the outfield, it probably doesn't score D'Angelo from second. It's going to have to be one in the gap. As you take a look, it's a perfect bunt. Pitcher's going to have to come off. The first baseman came off, and the second baseman, Samita, was a little bit late covering first. Everybody's safe. Bases juiced for Condon. Does an offer at the first one. Takes a pitch high, 1-0. So three singles here in the bottom half of the second. Off the pitcher, Sarah Takeda have loaded the bases. It'll be the sixth hitter, Condon, to try to keep the line moving here with two away in the bottom of the second. Still looking for the game's first run. Prime opportunity here for Laverne. 
The 2-1 from Takeda to Condon. He's going to be poked down the right field line. Fair ball. D'Angelo will come in to score, rounding third and scoring easily as Kendrick. So God is going to come to the plate. The play at the plate is not in time. It's a three RBI triple by Carly Condon, putting Laverne up on top, 3-0 here in the bottom half of the second. If you're Laverne, that is the perfect spark to the big, to this inning. And in great speed, great, great running by Condon and everyone on base to score, now that to score those three, the, to clear 12, the bases, and the ball headed. getting pa barely getting passed by the right fielder, fielder Rungi, easily gets in the third for a three run tripled. In step Shelby Tevis, seventh batter to bat here in the bottom half of the second. And she takes strike one. So with two outs, it was the bunt single by Ogata, followed by the three-run triple by Condon. Laverne up on top, 3-0 here in the bottom half of the second, and looking for more as the second pitch from Takeda is low, 1-1. One one. Tevis reached on a 6-4 fielder's choice in her first at-bat. A 1-1, one, one. Tevis takes outside, 2-1. For Condon, standing at third, now picks up her 10th, 11th, and 12th RBI on the season. Tevis at the dish looking for RBI number 14. The 2-1 from Takeda, swung on, little bloop single. Into center field, it'll be Laverde, the center fielder to make the catch to retire the side here in the bottom half of the second, but not before Laverne has four hits. The big triple by Carly Condon to score three. Laverne up on top of Chapman as we go top three, three nothing. You're watching LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. shelterpetproject.org. Top of the third here in Campus West. Laverne benefiting from the big three-run triple by Carly Condon. Now has a 3-0 lead as we go into the top of the third. It'll be 7, 8, and 9 due up for Chapman, <coughs> Samantha Tong, followed by Kyra Gallego and we Christine Laverde. Gianna Rojo looking to continue what she has been doing here in the first two innings. Tong, the shortstop, batting 200 on the season with 12 runs batted in. First one from Rojo to Tong, inside corner 0 and 1. Of Tong's eight hits on the season, four of which have been for extra bases. She doesn't offer the second one, 1 and 1. Three doubles followed by a triple. Infield and outfield play Tong straight up. The 1-1 one, one from Rojo is going to be slapped to the left side of the infield. It'll be the shortstop Tevis. Long throw to first in time to retire Samantha Tong. It's a great throw by Tevis with that strong arm. Getting the first, getting the runner towards first out on time for the first out. And a great stretch at first by Catherine Navarro. So in steps the catcher, Kyra Gallego. 231 on the season with a couple of runs batted in. One out here in the top of the third, 3 0 Laverne. First one to Gallego's inside, 1 0. A sophomore, Gallego, takes one outside, 2 0. The 2-0 finds the outside upper part of the plate, 2-1. and one. Gallego batting 500 away from Chapman. 
The 2 1 swung on, put on the right side of the infield. The second baseman, De Guzman, underhand flip to first for out number two. So a couple of ground outs here in the top of the third, and quickly two away in the center fielder, Christine Laverde, coming up. Laverde batting 288 on the season, has a home run and 11 runs batted in. Checks her swing, but it'll be fouled. 0-1-1. Oh, one, one. LeBron's playing really good defense right now and great communication among the infield and the, among the infields. The 0-1 to the sophomore out of Cyprus is fouled at the plate 0-2. Oh As a pitcher, a great defense is definitely key to help, to not only help her take take some breathers and relax just slightly a, a little bit but also it helps her focus more on her pitches and commands knowing that her defense has their back. The 0-2 with two outs swung on and missed. First strike three. Gianna Rojo three up three down in the Ladies top of the third. We, we go bottom three. Three nothing Laverne over Chapman. Win, worry, we'll You're watching LVTV3 Laverne Community so Television. Innings, so make sure you so grab a new fresh card. Two and a half frames done here at Campus West. Laverne up on top, three nothing. Gianna Rojo working on a gym, nine up, nine down to begin the ball game. And the big three run triple by Carly Condon. What's working for Laverne? Laverne, on the offensive side, Laverne is being patient, especially against Takeda, who, who has a pretty lo low ERA. And they're working, working her, her and being patient and finding the right pitches. And, but also more importantly, they're being patient and smart on on base as well. They're running, they're running at the right times to ex to execute and score the the runs. Now for the pitching side for Rojo, Rojo's commands is increasing and she's and she's still she has the you can see the confidence, you feel the confidence in her as she's battling between these innings. Still hasn't. Still got ways to go, but she's off to a great start, and you definitely do not want to take off the brakes. Having a three, that three-run triple by Condon has definitely helped her, but it hasn't helped her take the take a, a, a small toe off the base. But it's important to not take your foot off the base if you're Laverne. So it'll be Sarah Takeda facing the heart of the lineup, three, four, and five here in the bottom half of the third against Laverne. Justice Borden to lead things off. To cut into the wine, the first one to Borden's put in play to the left side. The shortstop Tong over to first in time. A little bit of a high throw, but a great stretch at first by Weiser for out number one. Good start by Chapman here. One pitch, one done. To get having her best season thus far at Redmond, Washington. Has a 3.58 ERA on the season, has improved steadily in her past four seasons at Chapman. Went from an 8.31 to a 4.85. As this one's going to be rocked to left center field, it'll bounce and go to the fence. Rounding first, headed over to second. Here's the throw, the play, and Navarro will be safe with a slide into second. A one out double puts her in scoring position here in the bottom half of the third. Nice job by Navarro, keeping her body strong, using her lower body to to step into that hit and that now ball, hitting it just past the left field, just past the left, left fielder uh, Ballard, and getting a nice slide to to barely make it to second for the for the double. So Navarro's good season continues as she doubles to left field. And steps D'Angelo. So Navarro is off of the pitch. This one's down the line. It'll be foul. That ball was just foul. Put in play down the left field line. Goes left of the bag. So they take a look. Yeah, Navarro's double. To left center field. It's a great relay play by Laverde in center field. As this one's going to get past the catcher, and Navarro's going to move up to third with one away. 
Good recognition by Navarro. Get with the pitch, getting past Gallego, and she's able to run to run and reach third base safely, and is now closer just to home plate. So the infield for Chapman steps in just a little bit as D'Angelo pops this one up foul behind the plate, and it'll clear the netting behind home plate into the stands, one and two. Vern with a 3 nothing lead in the bottom of the third. All three runs coming in the bottom of the second. Takeda's 1-2 to D'Angelo is going to be put in play to the right side. It'll be Rungi under it to make the catch. Here comes the play at the plate. Navarro with the slide, and she is safe. RBI sacrifice fly by Angelica D'Angelo picks up her team-leading 23rd run batted in on the season, and Laverne is now up on top 4-0. That's a good throw and release by Rungi. Get it. But Navarro just made it, just made it on time. As you can see here, she, was, she looks up and she just runs and was able to slide her foot in on time for the run. So base is empty, two away for Melissa Garcia. There's an offer at the ball, 1-0. Inside to Garcia, 2-0. Garcia struck out looking her first at bat. 4-0 Laverne here in the bottom of the third. Two away, base is empty. Garcia turns on this one into left field for a base hit. That is the third hit with two outs in this game for Laverne. And the inning will continue. It'll be the now right fielder, Sienna right Kendricks. Fielder, Laverne's being a little Sienna more aggressive in, in this inning, but still patient enough as they, they're continuing to find the right pitches and tire out Takeda and getting her, into, her to give up runs and hits. Kendricks fouls the first one off to the right side, 0-1. Kendricks had a base hit in her first at-bat. In the left field, just out of the reach of the shortstop, Tong. Garcia at first. Two outs, bottom three, 4 nothing. Laverne. Takeda into her wine. The 0-1 is going to be dribbled foul to the left side, 0-2. Three runs in the bottom half of the second for Laverne, followed by one here in the bottom of the third. Have given them this 4 nothing lead. Takeda a strike away from getting out of this inning. 0-2 misses high, 1-2. and two. The 1 2-2 to Kendricks. Put in play to the left side. The third baseman Wong throws across the diamond in time for out number three. We head to the top of the fourth. Laverne up on top, 4 nothing. You're watching LBTV3, Laverne Community Television. Every dollar. From 1945 to 1965, people born during these years are five times more likely to have hepatitis C. So even if you try to eat right, exercise, and take care of yourself, you could still have hepatitis C, a serious disease that's a leading cause of liver cancer. Everyone born 1945 to 65 should get a blood test for hepatitis C. Treatments can now cure this disease. Talk to your doctor about getting tested. Top of the fourth here in Campus West, Laverne enjoying a four nothing lead, Gianna Rojo working on her fourth inning. She'll face the top of the lineup, Michaela Foise, Sarah Samita, and Kristen Weiser. Both teams wearing pink for Strikeout Cancer, this doubleheader. Strikeout Cancer Initiative is a program through the NFCA 
in order to help raise funds and awareness to fight cancer. It leverages the personal experiences, community leadership, and professional excellence of fast pitch softball. Coaches nationwide are joining in to help increase cancer education and promote healthy living. As the first pitch to Foise is going to be put in play, it'll be the second baseman. De Guzman scoops it up, takes it to the bag herself, so four unassisted for out number one. Nice scoop, nice scoop and run by De Guzman, getting out Foise. Forzy, the speedster, now and the leader one, Sarah stolen bases, Biscaya. Especially on the first pitch to get out the quick, to get the quick out. Samita takes the pitch outside for strike one. Samita struck out looking in her first at bat. Infield and outfield for Laverne. Play Samita straight up. The 0 1 from Rojo. Misses outside, 1 and 1. One away, top of the fourth, base is empty. A 1-1, one, one, squared to bunt, pull the back, 2-1. and one. Samita, the sophomore from Hawaii. Looking to get things started here for Chapman in the top of the fourth. The two ones rip down the first baseline. Navarro, the first baseman, scoops it up over to first for out number two. Now batting number 30. Laverne's playing great Wyatt. defense right now, getting those two quick outs, grounding out to Navarro this time. Time getting, and for Rojo to get those quick two outs on those inside pitches. Comes the leader for Chapman. Fouls the first one back, 0-1. Kristen Weiser batting 328. 0 for 1 today, grounded out to second in her first plate appearance. 0 1 is put in play to the right side. Again to the second baseman, over to first in time. A quick 1 2 3, top of the fourth. We go bottom four, Laverne. Trying to add to their 4 0 lead. You're watching LVTV 3, Laverne Community Television. Strike ball and first pitch. Another great inning by Rojo, getting those quick three ground out plays. plays. She has yet to give up a run nor a hit, so she's keeping in that momentum and that confidence is, de is obviously the observant here t this afternoon. She can keep that up, they will be successful. If she keeps it up and if Laverne's as a whole keeps up the momentum, they will be fine. As for Chapman, it's important to try to to try to get on try to get on base. You find those right pitches against that Rojo may occasionally please miss row and just keep Laverne off. Laverne's hitters off base, runners the speedsters off base, and location, location, location. It'll be eight, nine, and one for Laverne. So we enter the bottom of the fourth. Laverne scoring in their last two innings, trying to make it three in a row. Michelle de Guzman, the second baseman, will lead things off. She flew out to right field on a soft line drive. Still on the mound is Sarah Takeda. It's not that Takeda hasn't been good today. She's been able to locate and change speed just as Rojo has done. Unfortunately, it's been the clutch hitting by Laverne, scoring three of their four runs with two away. First one to De Guzman. She takes high, one and up. The 1-0. Foul to the left side. We'll get in to the Laverne bullpen. One and one. De Guzman with a homer and five runs batted in on the season. The one-one. 
It's going to be put in play deep to center field. Long run for Christine Laverde. Right on the warning track for allowed out number one. Nice run by Laverde. Also not keeping her eye. Not keeping her eye off oh, the ball, keeping it on track and track, seven. running to that ball, Rachel catching it, O'Brien. grabbing it for the first out, just at the warning track. In steps, the number nine hitter in Rachel Ogata. Had a bunt single in her first at bat to load the bases to set up that three run triple by Carly Condon. Ogata takes the ball one and oh. The 1-0, a little slap swing to the second baseman, Samita, on the line. Out number two. Now batting center fielder number one, Carly Condon. So in steps the current hero for Laverne. The big three-run triple back in the second inning with two outs. Condon takes a strike on the inside corner, 0-1. Condon has reached base safely both times. Is one for two. The other time she reached was on the E5. 0-1, and Condon rifles this one into left center field for a base hit. It's her second hit of the ball game. Is now two for three. That's a great hit by, by Condon. Condon pretty much almost skyrocketed wow, just above the second, stop. just Number above 12. the shortstop stop to get on base. Bennett. It's the fourth hit allowed with two outs in this game. Two of which have avoided one, two, three innings. So just making Takeda work a little bit more now as the first pitch is in there. Strike one to Tevis. Tevis is 0 for 2. Condon at first with five stolen bases. The 0 1 is going to be fouled back as Tevis was a little handcuffed on the inside part of the play. 0 and 2. Tevis, two homers and 13 runs batted in on the year. Takeda, a strike away from getting out of this inning as this one's fouled back. Count will remain 0 and 2. A good frame, but there goes Condon. And she'll be in there safely as she swipes second. A delayed steal this time. The catcher Gallego is trying to frame a pitch on the outside corner for strike three. That's a great read by Condon as as Gallego tried to frame frame that pitch for to get the strikeout. She's able to steal second successfully. The one two's rifled right back at the pitcher Takeda. And she makes the catch for out number three. If you're playing along with us, you should have marked off there. So we go drive. top of the Let's fifth here at Campus eight, West. Eight, Laverne with a comfortable 4 nothing lead. You're watching LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. Serving the nation's poor and vulnerable regardless of faith 
and advocating on their behalf, we are Catholic Charities. Campus West here in Laverne, California. Top of the fifth between Laverne and Chapman. Laverne with a 4-0 lead. They got here with a three-run triple back in the third by Carly Condon scoring Angelica D'Angelo, Sienna Kendricks, and Rachel Ogata. Laverne's fourth run came in the bottom half of the third with a RBI sacrifice fly by D'Angelo to score Navarro, who doubled. For Gianna Rojo, it's been 12 up, 12 down to begin the ball game. And she works first pitch inside to Heaven Wong. Swing and a miss by Wong. One and one the count. Wong leads Chapman with two homers on the season. The one one. Off speed pitch and a beauty. Wong way out in front, one and two. Let's see if Rojo goes back to that off speed pitch or another fastball just off the plate, right side of the plate. The one two slapped foul. Count will remain one and two. Rojo's had her fastball and off speed working today. Her command has been there as well. The one two to Wong. Swung on and missed strike three for the first out in the top of the fifth. Again, she went back to that breaking ball. It's the breaking ball. Well, pitch slowing down. Pulling the batter to the first now out. Number three, Liz Rungi. In steps the right fielder, Liz Rungi. One out, base is empty. She pulls this one foul to the left side. 0 oh, 1. Rungi struck out swinging in her first at bat. For Rojo, she has five strikeouts on the game. Oh, one outside, one and one. Rungi came in batting 375. One and one the count. Infield and outfield play Rungi straight up. The deliberate hitter Rungi steps in. The one one is swung on, put in play to the right side. It'll be De Guzman at second. Throw to first in time for out number two. So quickly. Two up, two down here in the top of the fifth. Now batting number 24, Hope Ballard. And the left fielder, Hope Ballard, will come in. <laughs> Ballard watches the first one miss outside, 1-0. and oh. Ballard grounded out to the third baseman, Borden, in her first at bat. This one slapped to the left side. Tevis is going to have trouble with it. And in the fifth inning with two outs, Chapman has the first base runner of the game. Now batting number 33. Tevis nearly had Samantha it, but Cross. just couldn't, keep, couldn't get it out of her glove on time as we bobbled it just a little slightly. Slightly. Hence a runner on first with two outs. So Ballard reaches in on the error. First error for Laverne in this game. First base runner allowed by Laverne. Second one's fouled. Oh and two, the count to Tong. A runner at first. 0-2 oh, misses outside, 1-2. and two. So it was 14 in a row retired to start the game by Rojo. Ended with the error. The 1-2 misses outside, 2-2. Two and two. And for Ballard, she has two stolen bases on the season with two outs. 
She stays put as this one's popped up right side of the infield. Catherine Navarro, the first baseman in foul territory, makes the grab for out number three. We go to the bottom half of the fifth. Laverne out in front, 4 nothing. Gianna Rojo pitching one heck of a game. She definitely is. She's keeping up despite that error. She, error. she was able to successfully pop up. Able to get Tom to pop out. Pop out in the foul territory, and in the inning, she's, con she's showing you know that, that consistency like in her pitches, in her command, especially with the location that she's changing locations in various pitches. And starting the strikeout with that defense behind her helping out as well. Has raised a thousand dollars to help support the fight against cancer. Aside from the Tavis error, the, the defense is definitely, the building has definitely cancer, stepped up as well, which is pretty much aside from from the correct pitching locations as a pitcher's best friend, really. Yeah, and for Rojo, really having the swing and miss stuff as well. The off-speed has fooled Chapman all game long, has her season high in strikeouts through five innings, has five of them. As we are entering the bottom half of the fifth, Laverne looking to add to their 4 nothing lead. Takata still on the mound for Chapman. Takeda through four innings has allowed six hits, four runs. All of them earned. Laverne has left a runner on base in all four innings. Takeda still looking for that elusive one, two, three inning. It's been anything but comfortable for her in all four innings. Justice Borden to lead things off here in the fifth. Watches a strike 0 and 1. Borden 0 for 2 today. A couple of ground outs to the left side. Takeda trying to get ahead 0 2. The 0 1. Swung on, put in play to the left side. Wong, the third baseman, throws a strike over to first. Out number 1. Quick two pitch out by Takeda. It's a good start for Chapman. Chapman, was, let's see if Laverne no, could actually could bat, battle First back and avoid that one. potential one, two, three inning that Takeda has yet to have. They've been doing a great job all afternoon so far doing so. In steps the powerful hitter, Catherine Navarro, one for two with a double. Pulls this one foul to the left side, 0-1. The last two innings for Takeda, she has gotten the first two Laverne hitters. But then Laverne has been able to get a couple of two out base hits to keep the inning alive. A one misses outside, one and one to Navarro. Navarro doubled and scored her last time. Came in to score on the sacrifice fly by Angelica D'Angelo scored the fourth run for Laverne. It's the 1-1, one, one, misses inside and low, 2-1. And no runs, no hits, one error for Chapman. Four runs, six hits, one error for Laverne. We are in the top of the fifth, one out. And a 3-1 and one count to Catherine Navarro. Takeda has to be weary right here. Big pitch coming. The 3-1 to Navarro is going to be shot down the left field line. If it's fair, it's gone, but it will be foul. Navarro just missed hitting her 10th home run of the season. As the count works full. One out, base is empty, bottom five. The payoff pitch is put in play in the center field for a base hit. Navarro collects her second hit of the day. A double and a single, she is two for three. The one out single here for Laverne will bring up Angelica D'Angelo. Nice, nice patience and a great job, great 
Great hit by Navarro to get that to get that ball just past Tong, with, despite the great effort and stretch to get on first. And it shows you that Navarro's not trying to do too much up there. Just missed hitting a homer on the 3-1 pitch. Is not getting ahead of herself trying to pull another one there. As this one's popped up, shallow left center field, shading her eyes from the sun with her glove is Tong to make the catch for out number two. And it's important as a hitter, especially if you've just missed a big hit, whether it's an extra base hit or even a nice single, to not try to do too much, as you just said. You said, rather than caring about the home runs, like individual home runs, get on base and help out your teammates. Teammates try to advance you. Series Garcia, this one's in the dirt. There goes Navarro to second on the wild pitch. And she's in there safely. Takeda's had a couple of wild pitches today, and that's a great recognition by Navarro to advance to second. So now Navarro in scoring position, two away for Melissa Garcia. The one is offered at and foul to the left side, one and one. Garcia one for two today. Struck out looking and promptly singled in the bottom half of the third. The 1-1 one, one with two outs is going to be shot in the left field. A diving play by Hope Ballard for out number three. Beautiful play by the Chapman left fielder. Saves a run. We go top six. Laverne still up on top 4 nothing. You're watching LVTV3 Laverne Community Television. Aiden has asthma. Secondhand smoke has triggered his asthma so bad to the point where he had to end up in the emergency room. And he has spent multiple nights in intensive care. Now he's on a whole bunch of medications. My tip to you is, don't be shy to tell people not to smoke around your kids. For free help, call 1-800-QUIT-NOW. Top of the six here at Campus West. Laverne up on top of Chapman, 4 nothing. Three runs coming in the bottom half of the second, followed by a run in the bottom half of the third. Gianna Rojo working on her sixth inning of the day. She has reached the sixth inning four times this season. It'll be 8-9-1 due up for Chapman as Kyra Gallego takes a strike 0-1. Gallego 0-for-1, grounded out to second in her first at-bat. The catcher came in batting 231. The 1-0 is inside corner for a strike. Owen 2 the count to Gallego. Two misses outside, one and two. Four nothing, Laverne, top of the sixth. Gallego trying to get things started as Chapman is looking at just a few more outs. The one two is going to be blooped down the right field line. Foul. Called foul by the umpire down first base line. That ball trailed to right field. That just hit the ins the inside of the white line for foul. It's a tough angle from where we are sitting. The one two. Swung on right back to Rojo. She'll field it and throw to first for out number one. Nice fielding play by Rojo too. Looked like she actually stopped that ball ball. 
ball and trapped it and then McGuire able to toss four. that to Burke Christine to Navarro on first for the first go. So Rojo benefits from the foul ball call. Gets Gallego for out number one here in the sixth. Squaring the bunt and taking a strike is Christine Laverde. She's behind 0-1. Laverde struck out swinging way back in the third inning. Rojo's 0-1, swung on and missed 0-2. Another off-speed pitch, getting Laverde out in front. Infield and outfield, play Laverde straight up. See if Rojo goes back with that off-speed pitch that's been working all day. The 0-2 swung on and missed, she does on the outside corner. Rojo thought it was three outs as well as D'Angelo, but it's only out number two. That's the sixth punch out for Rojo. Sometimes when you're in the moment, you may tend to forget, for, forget the amount of outs, but. And she jokingly <laughs> puts up big two outs, letting everyone on the team know. Squaring the bunt, takes it back, is Foise for a called strike one. Foise, the dangerous hitter in Skyak, leads Skyak with a 468 average coming into today, is 0 for 2. Fouls at this one, 0 and 2. Now, Foise's batting stance and approach is interesting as she, lo as she looks to bunt, looks as if she's bunting, but then, but then just reaches the back the bat left just in time to actually hit it as she's patient. O2 is way outside, one and two. Basically giving off the hints that, hey, I'm fast and I'm gonna get on board. Rojo, the one, two. Misses the outside corner, count evens at two. Two outs, 2-2 two, two the count. Base is empty in the top of the six. The pitch is fouled, and we'll do it again. It's a good little battle between Foise and Rojo. Laverne with a 4 nothing lead here in the top of the six with two outs. The 2-2 two, two to Foise is put in play down the left field line. Foul. Board in the third baseman. It's playing no doubles down the line. And she attempted to get that one, but it would go foul. And again, the 2-2 two is high, 3-2. and two. The first full count of the game for Rojo. As the good battle between Rojo and Foise continues, the payoff pitch is slapped foul to the left side. Foise once again is fouling that ball, that ball. Great job by Rojo being patient, but at full count, this payoff pitch, it's important. Location is definitely important right now. The payoff pitch is swung on drilled foul down the right field line. Rojo has just about exhausted everything that she has to offer to Foise and Foise Continues to battle. Payoff pitch once again is put in play down the left field line. Long run and the grab in foul territory by Rachel Ogata for out number three. We go bottom six. Laverne still leading 4 nothing over Chapman. You're watching LVTV3 Laverne Community Television. It's a nice little run. Run, know that getting at least little run by Ogata to hustle, hustling and tracking that ball down and foul to get the final out of the top of the inning. And now with Laverne coming up in this bottom half. The National Fast Pitch Coach Association Strikeout Cancer Program led to the personal experience, community leadership, and professional excellence of fast pitch softball coach nationwide to help increase cancer education 
and to promote healthy living through awareness efforts and fundraising activities. We thank you for your support here today. Now, the, now it's the top of the, sorry, excuse me, the bottom of the six. The Panthers want to stay in this game. They have to not only control Laverne's hitters, but they have, they have to take advantage of Rojo, Rojo at this next thing, assuming she's back out. She has exerted a lot of energy throughout the, through the last bat against Foley, so that that could have tired that could tire definitely definitely tires you out as a pitcher, especially when you're going through through potentially a complete game right here. Bottom of the lineup for Laverne here in the bottom of the sixth. That'll be the right fielder, Sienna Kendricks, to lead things off, followed by the second baseman, Michelle de Guzman. And in the hole is Rachel Ogata in left field. First pitch, Kendricks doesn't offer at it. 1-0 and the count. Takeda through five innings. Has allowed seven base hits and four runs. And she pounds in a strike one and one. Kendrick one for two on the day. Single and a ground out as this one's low in the dirt. Two and one. Kendrick scored one of the four runs for Laverne. Infield and outfield for Chapman. Players straight up. Takeda into her wind. The 2-1 from the right-handed pitcher is going to be swung on into center field. Moving over about five steps to her right is a Loverde for out number one. It's a nice pitch by Takeda to get Kendrick to pop now up. Slightly Laverne. left center field for the first Second out. Baseman, number 15, Michelle Dickinson. One out, base is empty in the bottom half of the six. Four nothing Laverne, and Michelle de Guzman steps in. No offer at the first one, one and out. De Guzman 0 for two with a couple of flyouts. Ahead of the count here, one and out. Takeda the righty, the wind, the pitch is shot into left field for a one out base hit. De Guzman moves to one for three on the day. And that'll bring up the left fielder, Ogata. One on and one out in the bottom half of the six. Now batting. Nice job by De Guzman hitting that Rachel ball just above Ogata. Kevin Wong, the third baseman's glove, just slightly above her. For a nice effort by Wong herself. But De Guzman winning the, bat the battle against Takeda. Takeda. Going, advancing to first easily for his base one hop single. Ogata squares to bunt, takes it back, takes a ball, one and oh the count. The corners are pinching here against Ogata because of her speed, of course, and also because she has a bunt single already today. She did it with two outs and two on as the one oh. Misses outside 2-0, so Ogata with a good count here. It was a 2-0 count in which Ogata got her bunt single. This time, the third baseman Wong and the first baseman Weiser are aware of her abilities. The 2-0 from Takeda is going to put in play right back to the pitcher. They throw to second for one, back to first, not in time. So 1-4 fielder's choice, and Ogata's at first with two outs. A nice stretch by Weiser to try to, to, to get that out, but now got it too fast. Center fielder, too fast for one, Chapman. Carly Condon. So it'll be Carly Condon now with one out. You take a look at the replay. A slow comebacker to the mound, and that's the reason why they're unable to turn two on that one. As Ogata's off with the first pitch, the throw is in the dirt as well as the throw was in to second. And Ogata swipes second base, gets herself in scoring position. 
It's her fourth stolen base on the year. That's a great jump by Elgato. Taking off as soon as Takeda releases her pitch and sliding into second base to get into scoring position for the Leopards. Condon has three runs batted in. Looking for more here with Ogata at second, and she takes a strike one and one. Condon's two for three, has reached base all three times. By an error, a triple, and a single. The one one with two outs and a runner at second. Misses two and one. As you take a look here, Ogata sliding in head first to get to get that stolen base. The two one is low and it gets past the catcher in Gallego. Moving over to third is Ogata. Count moves to three and one to Condon. This is a great hinder hitter's cow for Condon. Condon, look for Takeda to potentially either throw a fastball or a breaking, a breaking ball. Breaking ball, close to the strike zone. Three one doesn't offer at and it's ball four. First walk allowed by Takeda. First walk in the ball game, period. And that'll bring in Tevis. Kind of a situation Alabama. where Condon has Short gotten stop. the better Short half throw. of Takeda all game Shelby long. Tevis. Had a triple and a single with three runs batted in. There's another run in scoring position with Ogata at third. Let's just lay off and go after Tevis, who is 0 for 3 against Takeda. So runners at the corners for Laverne. There goes Condon. She's going to swipe second. Good situational running right there by Laverne. As the speedster Ogata was waiting just to see if Gallego was going to throw to second. Once again, Laverne continues to be aggressive on the base running, running special to get two runners in scoring position right here. Oh, one to Tevis is low, one and one. It was Chapman who have been the Rabbits all season long. Having a lot of stolen bases, but it's been Laverne today with three of them compared to Chapman zero. The one one to Tevis with two in scoring position. Good off speed pitch. Got Tevis way out in front, one and two. Runner at third is Ogata. At second is Condon. Two outs. Bottom of the six, four nothing Laverne. The one two is high, two and two. Shiraketa, even though there's two runners in scoring a position, it's important just to focus on Tevis. As there is two outs, but still be careful location-wise as Tevis is a good contact hitter. Two on, two out, and a 2-2 two -two count. Outside, three and two. Kyra Gallego, catcher trying to frame it on the outside corner. Not fooling home plate umpire. As the count goes full. Payoff pitch from Takeda to Tevis is going to be foul to the right side, and we'll do it again. Tevis has 13 runs batted in on the year. Came up in the bottom half of the second with a runner in scoring position and would fly out. And in the bottom of the fourth had a runner in scoring position, and she would line out to the pitcher. Has another chance here. The payoff pitch is taken outside ball four. And that'll load the bases for Laverne and Justice Borden. It's a good eye by Tevis to draw the walk. Now with bases loaded, now batting, puts a little more pressure on Takeda, but still, but it's still aware Justice that there is two, Borden. there are two outs. So she pretty much just needs to focus on this up on Borden right here. Laverne has four hits with two outs. Looking for number five as Borden comes in with two outs and the bases full of leopards as she takes a ball one and oh. Borden's 0 for three with three ground outs to the left side of the infield. The 1-0 is high 2-0. Couldn't get on top of her off-speed pitch and Kyra Gallego is gonna take time and try to settle down 
her ace pitcher in Sarah Takeda. Inning began with Kendricks flying out. De Guzman would single. Ogata would reach on a fielder's choice and then steal second. And then back-to-back -back walks surrendered by Takeda to Condon and Tevis have loaded the bases for Laverne here. Second time of the game, the bases have been loaded. The last time it was a three-run triple by Condon. The 2-0 to Borden in there, strike one, two and one. Borden on the year, seven runs batted in. There's a good opportunity to add to that total here. The 2-1 two with two outs is going to be swung on and fouled back, two and two. Now if you're Borden here, you definitely want to be selective just on your swing, depending on the location from Takeda. As for Takeda herself, it's important, it's important to find that right location set up by Gallego and execute with it to get out of this jam. 2-2, two, two, the count bases loaded with two outs. The pitch misses low, and the count will go full. Three and two, the count to Borden. Ogata at third, Condon at second, and Tevis at first. Bottom of the six, two outs, four nothing Laverne. Runners will be off with the pitch from Takeda as misses ball four, and Takeda has walked three straight batters. Ogata will come in to score. It is now five nothing Laverne here in the bottom half of the sixth. That ball was thrown in the inside of, inside of the plate. Great eye by Borden to draw that walk and no, scoring the run. First baseman, number 21. And that'll bring up Catherine. the cleanup hitter. This one's shot at the second, a shortstop. It'll go into the outfield. It's a hard hit ball. Two runs will come in to make it 8-0. That's a great hit and by Navarro hitting hitting that ball hard enough to get it just out of Tong's glove. And a ball like that that has a little skip. If the ball has a little skip like that, it's hard. As you can see here, as Navarro is patiently waiting for that pitch, he hits it hard enough for Tong and that little hop. Tong makes it hard for the shortstop or for any infielder to really keep that ball inside the glove. Hence it bounces into left center field, scoring the two runs for Laverne. New pitcher for Chapman will be Samantha Whalen. Number eight, Samantha Whalen. She's two and three on the season, has a 4.22 earned run average in 61 innings. She has worked the most innings for Chapman, has allowed 37 earned runs, has walked 16 batters, to 33 strikeouts. And she's going to be asked to get out of a tough situation here. Laverne has been able to rally for three in the bottom half of the six. It is now 7 nothing over Chapman. If you're Chapman right here, it's very important to get this out. And especially with Wayland, as you mentioned Billy it's in a tough situation with D'Angelo up to bat and still two Calvary. runners on base with Catcher, with one one scoring Angelica position first pitch to D'Angelo nearly hits her gets out of the way of trouble one and oh the count this is the situation you want if you're Laverne you're already up but you're already up by eight, looking to add more. One oh misses inside two and oh. Excuse me, set up by seven. Two oh in there, two and one. Runner at second is Borden. At first is Navarro. Two one misses inside. Three and one. D'Angelo with a chance to win it. 
The 3-1 is going to be grounded to the left side. The shortstop will scoop it up, throw to first in time for the third out. So Whalen keeps Chapman's hopes from getting mercied. We go top seven, Laverne with a healthy 7-0 lead. You're watching LVTV3, Laverne Community Television. No one would ever notice me. But I knew I could be more. That one day, I would make people smile. Top of the seventh here at Campus West, Gianna Rojo is looking to do something special here. Laverne with a 7-0 lead over Chapman. It'll be the two, three, and four hitters to go against Gianna Rojo. Now while Laverne is in a pretty comfortable lead and position right now, the game isn't over until it's over, until that last strike or out occurs. So it's important to still be able to still keep your foot on that pedal, but now with potentially at least a few toes on it compared to the entire foot. If you're Rojo, keep up that command and get out of and get out of these Lady inning. Number one, Sarah Samita. So it'll be Sarah Samita, the second baseman, to lead things off here in the top half of the seventh. Rojo's first one to Samita. This is outside. One and oh the count. One zero finds the outside corner one and one to Samita. Third baseman Borden is in just a little bit to respect the bunting ability of the second baseman Samita. One one once again Gianna Rojo finds the outside corner one and two. Samita 0 for two on the day, struck out looking, and grounded out to first. The outfielder is shading Samita just a little bit to the left as the one two misses outside two and two. Top of the seventh, base is empty. The two two to Samita is grounded to the shortstop Tevis. The strong throw to first in time. Tevis initially came in on it, then had a go to her left and threw a strike to first and a good stretch by Navarro. That's a nice run and stretch by now Tevis to throw that, 30. to throw the quickly one. release that ball against the speedster, the speedster, and great job by Navarro stretching that to barely get that first out on time. The first one misses to Weiser. The 1-0 to Weiser, outside, 2-0. Oh. Look at the out. replay here, Tevis reaches there and grabs it and just in time, but Navarro stretches out those legs and the, her glove. Count now moves to 3-0 and oh, to the dangerous hitter, Kristen Weiser. D'Angelo will go out there and try to settle down Rojo, who's been working an absolute gem here at Campus West. Six and a thirds of brilliant pitching. The 3 0s fouled back three and one. The 
Weiser 0 for 2. Grounded out both times to second base. The 3-1 from Rojo is going to be swung on and foul down the right field line. The count works full. Good job by Rojo to work the count from 3-0 now to 3-2. and two. Laverne 7-0, scored three in the second, one in the third, and three in the sixth. One out, base is empty. The payoff pitch is inside ball four. And Weiser will have a one out walk. It looked like as if Rojo had that pitch, but had that pitch located, well, D'Angelo, excuse me, located just a little bit inside, but that pitch just swerved a little too much inside, hence why she kind of shook her pitching hand a little bit. First pitch to Wong, misses, 1-0. and oh. So that was the second base runner allowed by Rojo. The first one, that was her fault. First one was an error by Tevis. As the second pitch to Wong is in there, strike one. One and one the count. The one is grounded foul down the left field line. One and two, the count goes. Even though Weiser hasn't had a stolen base all season, Chapman is going to be more aggressive here as they are down by a significant amount of, amount of ramp, runs and being only one out to avoid the double play as well. The one, two is grounded to third. The throw to second for one. The throw to first, not in time. So Wong will reach first, five to four on the fielder's no, choice, no, and Rojo's now one out away. Navarro almost did the splits there, trying to reach for that ball to get the, that, the runner on first out. But nice job there. She's been working that position all afternoon. First pitch from Rojo misses low, one and oh to Liz Rungi. So you take a look at the nice play by Borden to get the lead runner. It was really close at first. The 1-0 is foul to the right side, one and one. Laverne seven to nothing. Two outs in the top of the seventh. All attention is on Rojo. The 1-1 shot deep down the left field line, foul. It's a loud strike number two. Rojo's now strike away. See if Rojo goes back to that, to a similar pitch, that fastball up and in, or a potential breaking ball. The one-two is outside, two and two. Laverne with a seven-nothing lead here in the top of the seven, two outs. The runner at first is Wong. The two-two, just outside, three and two. Rojo here just definitely definitely want to take some couple of deep breaths right here. Payoff pitch to Rungi is high, ball four, back to back walks. There'll be runners at first and second. For Chapman. Now batting number 24. It's actually second walk in this half inning. It wasn't back to back as Wong reached on the fielder's choice. Nonetheless, two outs, two on. And it'll be the left fielder, Hope Ballard. Ballard nearly gets hit by the pitch. Gets out of the way of one. One and oh the count. You can see, definitely see the fatigue here in Rojo as the command. Her command's a little more off now. The one oh to Ballard is high and outside. Two and oh. 
And for a second time this inning, Angelica D'Angelo is going to go out there and try to settle down Rojo. She has been on her game all game long. Six and two-thirds of masterful pitching. Even though they're, they have a comfortable lead, it's still important to calm down your pitcher to avoid any potential damage and also reach that confidence that she had throughout the entire game. Two on, two out, top of the seventh. The 2-0 swung on and missed. Two and one. Ballard reached base safely her last time, was the first base runner allowed. She reached on the E6. The 2-1 is outside, 3-1. and one. Gianna Rojo trying to find this last out and is struggling. The 3-1 finds the outside corner to put the count at 3-2. With two outs and the count full, the runners will be off with the pitch. Payoff pitch is swung on, put in play to the shortstop, and Tevis is going to bounce off her glove. A run will come in to score. It'll be an error on Tevis, her second error of the game. That's a nice, nice batting approach. But Tevis almost had, had the ball in her glove, but it popped out, hit the top of her glove. Love scoring the run, run for Chapman. As we take a look at, as we take a look at the replay here, Tevis could not, couldn't keep the ball in play, grounded in her glove as it hops out in that bottom part of the glove, going into the outfield. Seven to one the score now. As Chapman gets an unearned one here in the top of the seventh. Your Rojo, it's definitely important now. You have to remain calm and and relax at this point. First pitch to Tong is inside corner for strike one. The 0 1 is a comebacker to Rojo. She'll get it. The flip to first is thrown wild. Another run will come in to score for Chapman. They have runners at second and third. The ball bounced off of Rojo, Rojo's body, and, as, and rolled slight, slowly down that little steep circle. Circle, and as she tries to get the ball, she tries to release that ball quickly and field it, but she softly has it too soft. So, throw was a little too soft in her, no, on her part. Seven, part scoring Rungi. Rungi as it gets passed by Navarro. So two errors on the play. Both by Gianna Rojo and Chapman have runners at second and third, two outs, 7-2 the score. Rojo throws a nice, nice little breaking, breaking, slow breaking ball right there to have a swing and miss. Bill Avern right now, it's very important. It's important to, to keep the eye on the ball and avoid any more errors. One and one the count to Kyra Gallego. One and one misses outside, two and one. Runner at third is Ballard, runner at second is Tong. The two one is swung on. Shot into the outfield. It'll be caught by Carly Condon for out number three. 
in Gianna Rojo. No hits. Chapman at Campus West. It was a beautiful pitching effort by Gianna Rojo. She gets credited with a no hitter, but it was a little bit shaky towards the end, and especially with two runs scored on a no hitter game, you kind of don't expect that too often. But it was the four errors, and two by Tevis at short one. and Our two score, by the pitcher seven, Gianna Rojo two. at first. You definitely so don't see see it too, a no minutes. hitter with runs scored. But despite those errors, she's pitched fantastic throughout the game, keeping her control, control aside from the seventh inning. Her pitching was was on point. Her command was up there. Velocity, velocity was well. As well, and as for Laverne, the offense has definitely, definitely scored enough to keep that comfortable lead. And previously, aside from the seventh inning and those errors, the defense has definitely served their purpose as well, getting out those crucial outs, making those key plays. So we take a look at the scoring recap, Laverne. Tacked on three runs in the bottom half of the second. It was a three-run triple by Carly Condon to make it 3-0 in the bottom half of the third. A sacrifice fly by D'Angelo made it 4-0 Laverne. Laverne would again put on three more runs in the bottom half of the sixth. It was a bases-loaded walk by Borden to bring in a run to make it 7-0 at the time. We went into the top of the seventh with Rojo needing to pitch just three more outs for her no-hitter, and she would run into trouble. Two, two runs would come in to score for Chapman off of three errors in that inning. Nonetheless, Gianna Rojo picks up the win, improves to 5-5 five and five on the season. She no-hit Chapman here at Campus West. Final score, Laverne 7, Chapman 2. You're watching Laverne Community Television, LVTV3, Billy Lopez alongside Nicolette Rojo. Have a good day.